Okay, so here we are. My name is Aria. This is Eating Your Feed, the show where people like me are challenged to recreate viral dishes and recipes from the internet. Adam has brought me in to make something. I, uh, I cook pasta every now and then. This is gonna go either wonderfully well or uh, disastrously terrible. I've just been told that I am making the two and a half foot anaconda burrito that was featured on BuzzFeed's Worth It. This recipe was developed by Edwin and his lovely family at Taqueria Yareles. The man is carrying giant tortillas. Are those regular sized tortillas? I've actually never made rice before. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of meat. Ground beef, I'm assuming. Chopped lettuce, pico de gallo on top, and then this green sauce. Beans, more beans. Oh, he has good technique. He's like rolling. Takes two people to carry it. That's big. It takes up the entire table. Because of the char on it, it does look like the patterns of an anaconda. Okay, a burrito seems simple enough, but A, never made a burrito. B, never made rice. Luckily, I do have the wonderful Rie to help me Hi. here. <laughs> Let's just talk very simply. Okay. How do I make rice? <laughs> we made rice together, isn't it? What do we make rice? Usually, sticky rice is cooked in a bamboo steamer. But if you don't have one, you can use a regular steel steamer. We did! Yes, oh, yes we did. <laughs> but we steamed it. We steamed it, yes. Yes. And then what do you think the sauce is, though? That's it. She's putting in it. Because it's it's coloring it and flavoring they it. They use tomato. Ground beef. Mm -hmm. Probably just season it, right? Yeah, Probably. you're going to season with a bunch of spice. The big tortilla. Mm -hmm. There's five. Pico de gallo. I have really good pico de gallo recipe. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Pinto beans. Lettuce. And salsa verde. Cheese. Swiss? No, I'm not Swiss <laughs> cheese. The final step is kind of the tricky one. They put it on a flat top. We take one flat top here, like a small Griddle. one. Mm -hmm. Griddle. One here. Another one here. Would that work? Yeah, think, yeah, yeah, right? I think. Thank you so much, Rie. Yeah. I guess now I'm gonna go get my ingredients and then try to put this bad boy together. Right now I'm about to start working on the Spanish rice portion of the recipe as found on allrecipes.com by I Love To Cook. This person's recipe is for five servings, but we're gonna basically times that by five. I've done the math. I think. So first I'm just gonna chop up some onions. I took a kitchen safety class before I was allowed to, to do this show. All right, so they said to hold it like this. I was holding it like this before when I was cooking. <laughs> and I'm shaking his head because you're not supposed to do that. Woo! Onions have rings, much like a tree, and each ring actually signifies how old the onion is as well. That's life. Look at that. Grab this and you're just gonna put it in one of these things just to set aside for later because we're gonna use onions throughout this recipe. So right now I'm just gonna heat some oil in a large heavy Thing. Normally you cook rice and water. This one uses chicken broth. Why? I don't know. So it's heating up. And sometimes when you have a moment like this, what I like to do is I like to really take the time to really get into my head a lot and I stress. And this is a perfect opportunity to dip into the stress stash. So I don't know if any of you have done this, but I like to take a nice little chocolate bar and dip it in some peanut butter. It makes me feel better. That's good. I took my break and now the thing's ready to go. Beautiful. We're gonna do a bunch of oil. Chopped onion, 10 tablespoons. Oh, that's what we wanna hear. You wanna hear that sizzle? In total, I'm putting in seven cups of rice, 10 cups of chicken broth, um, five cups of the chunky salsa, and then we let the rice cook down and then we'll get started on our meat. So we got ourselves four pounds total of ground beef. We're gonna season the meat first. Now, of course, you can use taco seasoning or anything like that, but uh, we're gonna try and do it the old school way. Oh, here we go. Great. Oh, that's a funny looking thing. It's quite something. This one is the cayenne. And a little bit of paprika. This is the cumin. Pepper. Our old friend's salt. Now that it's all there, I'm gonna put gloves on. Even though I'm not the most experienced chef or cook, I do love cooking shows, travel show. There's something fun about cooking. It may not seem that way, but I find it very calming. We're gonna mix. Ooh, that's fun. Huh. Wow, I gotta do this more often. There's something very calming about just rolling meat in your hands. The rice is ready. It looks like it's getting there. I can try it. So a little raw. When we were out looking for ingredients, I was also keeping my eye out for an electric griddle. Uh, we actually bought two of them. This is the closest we can do in recreation, so. But for now, we're gonna use this to grill up the beef, get a little bit of oil. The oil's there for flavor. Oh, look at that brown. That's exciting to me, I won't lie. What I saw in the video is that the meat beef really just crumbles, and so I don't want it to stick together like a burger patty. I want it to, to crumble. Oh, that's my rice. There's a significant difference now. I, mean, I think it's definitely edible, but it could. See how it's all burnt down there at the bottom? We don't want that though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give this a thorough mix to really get the rice everywhere. The meat's coming together nicely. It smells great. I'm gonna start flipping it now. I lost some. Oh, well, you know what? This is a perfect little nugget to try. A little peppery, but it's good. We're making a mess, we're making a mess, but that's cooking, guys. That's cooking. And there we have it, beautiful dish. What I saw in the video is that their meat is a little finer than this, it's more crumbly. I'm gonna break it up a little bit more with my hand. <laughs> it's burning my hands. <laughs> yep, I don't think I need to do it anymore. Refried beans. This is very new for me, never worked with refried beans. Ah, juices. Didn't know that. 
That's the thing. Oh. Oh. I didn't like that. Okay. Ah, here it comes. There she goes. Ah. Interesting. It's a quite thick. It's not very wet. It definitely looks a lot smoother in consistency. It looks almost wetter. How to make refried beans creamy. Perfect one right here from An Affair to the Heart. How to make canned refried beans taste like a restaurant. They say adding sour cream is, is the trick. We got here crema mexicana. It's a more authentic Mexican sour cream. As a backup, I also have just classic sour cream. All right, I'll just put some sour cream in this and then we'll see how that works. Ooh. I feel like that already works. It feels smoother already. Look, we all learned something new together here. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna give it a little taste. That tastes great. I'm gonna add a little secret ingredient. I'm gonna add a little nugget of chocolate. And we're gonna see if it adds a little bit of flavor, huh? And the thing is, we won't tell Rie. And when she tastes it, we're gonna see if she notices. Now we're just gonna work on the pico de gallo using Rie's recipe. So I'd like Rie to be here with me for that. Here's Rie. <laughs> I wasn't trying yeah, to introduce like, you. We are fighting. <laughs> Rie, thank you so much for being here. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, thank you. I've been nibbling on these all day. Is this a uh, ingredient? This is for my stress. Oh. <laughs> I bought all your ingredients. Okay. And I timed it by five. Mm -hmm. Look at my onions. What do you think? Should be a little smaller. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you show me how? Yeah. Let's uh, cut tomato. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just like slice. Okay. I think I just want to go like dice. Just dice. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Oh, thank you, Rhea. You're very sweet. Do you have any fun facts about tomatoes? Fun Rhea? fact? Tomatoes feature a lot in Italian cuisine. <laughs> See the fun fact? It's a fact. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's just a fact. Great. We have extra tomatoes in case we want to make gazpacho. Just shouting a bunch of tomato based dish. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I recommend you to wear gloves when we cut. Okay. okay. All right, so how are you cutting these? You're cutting- So I just cut in half. In half? Okay, so you cut the end off, then you cut in half. Yeah. It's an honor to cook next to you, Rie. Thank you. <laughs> Mine is not quite as nice as you. It's okay. It's the one you made. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. You feel free to redo whatever you need to. <laughs> okay. Garlic. Your recipe says one clove, so times five, right? Yeah. Oh, I can take my gloves off. Ah, look at that. That was cool. This pico de gallo is going to be delightful. I think this very well may be the best pico de gallo that's come out it's of this kitchen. It's going to be best burrito. Can you sprinkle some? Oh, like that I can do, yeah. Cumin kind of gives a nice flavor. Tell me when. I think that's good. I had a moment of oh. panic right now when I thought this might be brown sugar. Because <laughs> I love yeah. brown sugar. It's okay. I hope right, you can stop. <laughs> oh, no, just keep going. <laughs> salt now. Yeah, let's taste it. Mm. More salt. Bye, Dave. Oh, oh, great. Oh. <laughs> More? Mm hmm. It's an anaconda burrito. It has to have a bite. Yeah. Yep, that has a kick. I think it's good. It's good? It's very hot. <laughs> yeah. Pico de gallo is done. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help yeah. with this, Rian. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> I'm excited about how big it is. Beautiful. That's cool. Yeah. This is the exciting part. Early on, as part of my game plan, I said I wanted a, a train of griddles. Found these long ones, and so here is a, that train, choo-choo. So there is a little uh, design flaw in my plan, so there'll be a little part here that won't get so quite so grilled, but now it's time to uh, get these babies together. We got tortillas. These were the biggest we could find. These do seem a little smaller than the ones he had. So this was what he did of it. He would go boom, and then he would put it on top of the other one, and then he would go double it up. Boom, wow. So I'm gonna start layering these already. And then we got this bad boy toasting up over here. Put this one on there. Oh my, oh my, look at that. Just to reheat it, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna go to a nice 200 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, this is done. Boom. Does it smell like that Korea Urellis? Adam, you were there. <laughs> yeah. Well, pretend. The first step we gotta do, beans. I'm gonna just dollop them and then I'm gonna spread them afterwards. So this is starting to look good. The rice, we're gonna go into dollops and then I'll spread it out. Now we do the same thing, we're gonna just Spread all this rice out, huh? We could use a little bit more, I think. Are you at all worried about overfilling it? I'm actually worried about overfilling this section. The end here actually could use a little bit more. That's a little empty over there, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more. The refried beans and the rice. Then the next is the beef. Oh, that looks great. It smells great, too. It can be, I'm just gonna be a little bit more generous. This, it looks pretty even right now. I think this end is a little, a little dry, a little barren over there, making a big mess. It's gonna be fun to clean. All right, but I think the meat's done. I put a little nubbit here that's uh, vegetarian friendly. Okay, so then the lettuce goes on next. And the pico de gallo might be the most exciting part because it's fresh homemade pico de gallo. What a joy in life if you're able to have fresh sauces made from beautiful 
on the vine tomatoes picked out by myself, Adam Bianchi. And don't you worry, the vegetarian section is gonna be loaded with this pico de gallo. So we go with the crema first. Woo! And then last but not least, we go with the salsa verde. It looks like a burrito to me. That's all that matters. We got a little cheese. This is not Swiss cheese. You don't wanna use Swiss cheese in your burritos. And then, of course, vegetarian section. Got a nice little handful there. This is the daunting part now. I need to watch how he rolls it, and then I gotta pop it on this bad boy. Folds this end first, like this, and then he fold. Let me over it on this side. Let me just <laughs> hunk it this way. <laughs> Ooh, what a mess. So he folds that hunk in. Oh, these are definitely overstuffed. Just crunch them in. <laughs> what do I do, Adam? Remember 20 minutes ago when I was like, are you at all worried about overfilling this? <laughs> I don't know and then that. you added even more rice? The end here actually could use a little bit more. That's a little empty over there. I'll make it work. We're gonna just take out a little bit out of each section. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna make a nice little quick little burrito here for myself as a little treat. I deserve this. It looks terrible. <laughs> It tastes great. That's my burrito. I'm gonna save this for later. Here's a real technique, cause he was like, he was like scrunching it. So that's what we did. He was like scrunching, and I think then he just goes. This is it. this answer. This just kind of just goes with an extra roll on each. How does he do this? Oh, look! It's coming together. And it's two and a half feet, I think. Of course, there's still one more portion we have to do. We have to toast this bad boy. I'm trying to make sure it's as tight as possible, so that way nothing leaks. Actually, I would appreciate some help. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift. We're... How you doing? It's definitely something you need to tag to. You need to work on, with someone on this if you're doing this at home. So definitely invite a friend over, maybe your mom, and you guys can work on this. Fun little Christmas activity, you know? All right, before you work it out, let's flip this over. How does he do this? Okay. Cover that up, cover that up, cover that up. It's okay, it's coming together. So now we gotta find a way to get this thing, once it's toasted, over here. Really? Ah, f Go on three. No, no, wait. Let's get a third person in here. Oh, thank God someone's here. What happened? So many things went wrong. <laughs> Looks like I missed the good part. <laughs> you, you really did. So you haven't eaten this yet. I have not eaten. Oh, I thought you guys were like nibbling on it. So we just go in like kind of like this? Sure. Oh no. Uh, oh, oh, oh my god. If we we're creative, we can even find a way to flip it over. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh. know. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's, okay. it's better, it's better. Yeah, look at that. Woo! <laughs> the crazy thing is that my mouth is watering. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. steam is looking good. It, smell, it smells fine. What are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a literal train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I had to rate this on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, I'd give this a nice uh, 1.5. I just think it's very impressive that they're able to not only make this on a daily basis, but they make so many a day. So it's a time honed craft. What a day. I'll remember this one. Who would like to take the first bite of this beauty? With I think you guys should recreate the thumbnail. <laughs> Never did I think I'd have to relive that. <laughs> Mine was all rice. Mine was all beans. <laughs> it's tasty. It looked like garbage, but... <laughs> oh. uh, ah. That's what we like. <laughs> Come on, Adam. It's pretty good. This is uh, to Edwin and the family at Tuckeria Urellis. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs>